Okie dokie. Let's do this same thing, but let's do it at 99%, which is alpha of 0.01. Alpha equals, that's alpha, 0.01, which matches the 99%. Okay? Same math. The 36 goes down in there. The 8 goes down in there. The 3 goes down in there. But we go look alpha 0.01 up in the table and at infinity because 36 is infinity. And we get 2.58. So again, we hit the escape button. Say discard that and call up our table. We see 2.575, which I round off to 2.58. That is 2 tail 0.01 is 2.575. Two tail, 0.01, 2.575. So back here again, we want to find the population mean at 99%. Normally, we do, if we're not told otherwise, we always do this two tails. Let me say that again. If somebody doesn't tell you otherwise, you always do these things at two tails. So if it just says find the population mean at 99%, you're going to do it at two tails, alpha 0.01. If it just says find the population mean, you're going to do it at two tails, and you're going to pick one between 95% and 99%, between 0.01 and 0.05, and you're going to choose between 0.01 and 0.05. Okay? People don't always tell you. Something. They just say F do it, and you get to pick. If nobody tells you otherwise, always do two tails and do 0.01 or 0.05. Okay, so if we do the math here, this ends up being 8 plus or minus 1.29. It's bigger. 1.29 is bigger than 0 0.98. Why is it bigger? Because this is 99% accurate versus 95% accurate. 0.98 was 95% accurate. To be 99% accurate, we got to get a bigger number, and that bigger number here is 1.29. So we take 8 plus 1.29 and 8 minus 1.29. So the mean is somewhere between 6.71 and 9.29. Again, we're going to have a confidence interval here, two tails. This is a 1%. Well, how do we do 1%? We take half of it, a half a percent over here, and we take a half a percent over here. That's the errors, the possibility of error. We're 99% sure that the right answer is between 6.71 and 9.29. There's a half a percent chance it's higher than that and a half a percent chance it's lower than that. All right. So let's get more complicated. A sample of nine. If you ever hear somebody doing something with a sample of nine, don't even bother to listen. The problem with a sample of nine is so inaccurate you wouldn't even want to think about it. This is what doctors do. You always hear if you watch the news, oh, doctor invented this new... And then you find out years later, pff, no. In fact, the... Um, should you floss? Right? Should you floss? It turns out that the studies of whether or not flossing is good for you had very, very few people in them. Sometimes one person. They were extremely small, and they showed that you should floss. When we finally got a study that involved a large number of people, turns out that there's apparently no benefit from flossing. Small samples, highly inaccurate, not trustworthy. Large samples are trustworthy. So when you, if you saw this in the real world, if you saw a sample of nine, you'd laugh and go on and not pay any attention to it. But you have to know how to calculate it because you're in class. So we have a sample of nine new only graduates earn a mean starting salary of 35000 per year, standard deviation of 15000 per year, what is the mean of all UNLV graduates? So here we are. We talked to nine students. And from those nine students, we're going to try to estimate, you know, 
4,500 students who grant. It's silly, right? It just doesn't work. But that's where we are. We got to know how to calculate these things. So we put the 9 in there because that's N. X bar is 35,000. We put that in there. That's 15,000. Now the question is what number goes here? And the answer is we start with the nine. We have degrees of freedom. Degrees of freedom. So remember that we're going to subtract the number of assumptions. Well, what's the number of assumptions? The assumption here is that this 35,000 is valid because we had to use the 35,000 to calculate the 15,000. If the 35,000 is wrong, then the 15,000 is wrong. If the 35,000 is right, then the 15,000 is right. So we had to assume that this number is right. That assumption costs us one degree of freedom. So the number of degrees of freedom we have is n minus 1. So 9 minus 1 equals 8. And we're going to do this at 95%. Okay. So let's keep our notations for now. Come back over here. We have two tail, 0.05. So there's 0.05. That's what we want, two tail. And we have eight degrees of freedom. And we see this number 2.306 here. That's the T that goes for the problem. Eight degrees of freedom. See how it says DF, degrees of freedom? Come down to eight, 0.05, two tail. How are you going to get to know how to do this? You're going to practice. It's how we get good at these things. We practice. It's really simple to do this. Just got to practice. We know we're doing two tail. We know we're doing 0.05. That means we're in this column. We have eight degrees of freedom because we have nine in our sample. Nine minus one is eight. That gives us 2.306. Come back over here. In goes 2.306. Now we do the math. 35,000 plus or minus 2.306 times 15,000 divided by the square root of 9. We get 35,000 plus or minus 11,530, which means that all we're able to say is that the mean starting salary of UNLV students is somewhere between 23,470 and 46,530. Totally meaningless number. It's absolutely meaningless. And why is it meaningless? Because we have nine students. So let's do exactly the same problem again, but assume a good assumption in this case. What would it, how would it look different if we had 900 students in the sample? Instead of talking to nine people, we talk to 900. Well, that's going to be way better because we have a large sample now. So we put this down here. Remember, it's the square root. 35,000 still comes here. 15,000 still comes here. 1.96. Whenever we have a large sample, we're always going to use 1.96, just the way it is. It's statistics, and it's simple statistics. So we do a little math. Boom, 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 boom. We get 35,000 plus 980, which is 34,000. So instead of having to tell people, yeah, students make when they graduate, yeah, 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 somewhere between 20 and 45, you can say, hey, look, they make between 34 and 36. That is a much better answer. To get that much better answer, we had to take a larger sample, and we took the sample of 900, okay? Bigger sample. Remember, we want to remember the equation. Remember here the equation is x bar that's 35,000 is the x bar plus or minus t which is the 1.96 s which is the 15,000 divided by the square root of n and n is the 900 okay pretty good now you're saying in an election it's always a percent it's like 40 percent plus or minus well, the answer to that is we're using something called a proportion, which is the number in a group divided by the N. So if we have 30 Republicans in a group of 50 people, the proportion would be 30 divided by 50, which is 0 
it turns out that the variances of proportions are really easy to figure out. To find the variance of a proportion, we take p times 1 minus p, and that's the variance. So if we take the square root, the standard deviation s, s would equal the square root of that. Simple. Okay? Again, you got to practice, you got to think it through. You can't just wing it, but if you do this a couple times, you'll be bored because it's way too easy. Okay? So you're going to go out and do a survey and you say, hey, we surveyed a thousand people and 550 of them said we're voting for nobody. That's the proportion. That would be 0.55. That's technically X bar, but we don't call it that. We call it P little p. The standard deviation of that would be square root of 0.55 times 1 minus 0.55. Now we can start doing some math and do our little equations and everything's lovely. So, we do a survey of 1,000 people and 48% like health care reform. The variance of that would be, that's 48% is 0.48, okay? So, the variance is 0.48 times 1 minus 0.48, which is 0.2496. The confidence interval is P plus or minus T times P times 1 over P. That's S, right? This is S. Divided by N equals pi. But this whole thing's under a big long square root sign. Okay? Pi is mu. When we do a percentage, we use pi instead of mu. So mu would be the average salary is 35,000. Pi would be 48%, like, so little percentages are here, everything else is here. P becomes X bar if pi becomes mu. Is that exciting? P works in place of X bar. Right? You're saying, why? I'm saying, because. So, pi equals, and this problem would be 0.48 times 1.96. It's our friend, 1.96. Why would we use 1.96? Because 1,000 is bigger than 30. There you go. Take the 2496, I take the 1,000, and again, we're going to get this because we're going to practice, and it's 0.48 plus or minus 3.145. Every poll, if you've been watching all the presidential election stuff, and I'm obviously um, recording this when they're doing primaries and elections, Every poll always says it's plus or minus 3%. Well, where do they get the 3% from? Right here. They do exactly the same math. They survey about 1,000 people. This always is close to 0 0.5. It's 0 0.4, you know, 0 .0. And we get the plus or minus 3%. Plus or minus 3%. Okay? You now know the secret. You can go get a very high-paying job at NBC News. All right, let's do another one. Firestone believes a tire lasts an average of 50,000 miles. A sample of 100 tires lasts 48,000 with a standard deviation of 5,000 miles, creating 95% two-tail confidence interval. So again, off we go. 100 is N. Goes right there. 48,000 is X bar. It goes right there. Because we have 100, we use... 1.96 and standard deviation s is 5,000 so that goes right there okay now we do the math and we get 48,000 plus or minus 980 it seems like we've done this math before and mu is between 47,020 and 48,980 do the tires last 50,000 miles 
Your confidence interval says no. Your confidence interval says the tires last between 47,000 and 20 miles and 48,980 miles. 50,000 is way out here somewhere. It's too big. We don't believe that these tires last 50,000 miles. If you're a bad statistician, how can you fix this problem? Bad statistician. None of us would do this. But if you're a bad statistician, how would you fix the problem? The answer is, 100 tires is way too many. You took a big sample. Let's take a little sample. Okay? So, our confidence interval, 95%. 48,000, that's X bar. Put that in the middle here. Plus and minus, we do the plus and minus. It puts 2.5% out here and 2.5% out here. That's your error. This plus that is your 5% error. 50,000 is out here somewhere in the error part. We don't believe that 50,000 is right. We believe you have to be in here somewhere between 47 and 49, basically. Okay? All right.